Gas absorption or scrubbing is an operation in which a gas mixture is contacted with a liquid for the purpose of dissolving one or more components of the gas mixture and to provide a solution of them in the liquid. Therefore, we can see that there is a mass transfer of the component of the gas from the gas phase to the liquid phase. The solute transferred is said to be absorbed by the liquid. In gas desorption or stripping, however, the mass transfer is in the opposite direction, that is, from the liquid phase to the gas phase. Here, two components of a liquid are separated by contact with the gas. The principles for both systems are the same. An example of gas absorption is in the carbonation of beverages. Carbon dioxide under pressure is dissolved in the liquid beverage, so that when the pressure is subsequently released on opening the container, effervescence occurs. Another example is the removal of ammonia from air by contact with liquid water. Ammonia is very soluble in water, whereas air is only slightly soluble. For desorption, one example is found in the steam stripping of fats and oils in which steam is brought into contact with the liquid fat or oil and undesired components of the fat or oil pass out with the steam. This is used in the deodorizing of natural oils before blending them into food products such as margarine, and in the stripping of unwanted flavors from cream before it is made into butter. The equilibrium conditions arise from the balance of concentrations of the gas or the volatile flavor between the gas and the liquid streams. In the gas absorption process, sufficient time must be allowed for equilibrium to be attained so that the greatest possible transfer can occur and also opportunity must be provided for contacts between the streams to occur under favorable conditions. Liquid and gas streams for absorption or stripping could be contacted using a tray column like that used in distillation. In tray absorption tower, multi-stage contact between gas and liquid takes place. In each tray, the liquid is brought into intimate contact of gas and equilibrium is reached, thus making an ideal stage. In ideal stage, the liquid leaving the tray is in equilibrium with the vapor leaving that tray. The most important step in the design of a tray absorber is the determination of number of trays. The liquid enters from the top of the column, whereas gas is added from the bottom. The efficiency of the stages can be calculated as shown. Instead of tray towers, we are going to look at the design of packed towers. Packed towers are a reasonable alternative to tray towers in situations in which the tray efficiency is low. Because of this very low efficiency, very large numbers of trays would be required so a viable alternative would be the packed tower. It is simply a tube or pipe which is filled with some sort of packing, which typically consists of particles around an inch in diameter. In commercial packed towers, the usual choice are particles with one of three different shapes. The purpose of packing is to promote good contact between the liquid and vapor streams, which are being brought together to permit interfacial mass transfer. In particular, what is desired is a large interfacial area per unit volume. The liquid stream is usually fed into the top of the tower while the vapor is fed into the bottom. Thus, we have countercurrent flow of the two streams, which has the same advantages for mass transfer as it did for heat transfer. The packing promotes good contact between the phases by dividing the two feed streams into many parallel interconnected paths. Ideally, you would like the liquid to flow downward as a thin film over the surface of the packing. This would give the maximum surface area of contact between the gas and liquid. 
If you just pour the liquid from the end of the pipe onto the top of the packing in tower, having much larger diameter than the pipe, most of the packing will not even be wet. Only some of the channels will be carrying flow. This is called channeling or the maldistribution of flow. The diameter of the tower is usually chosen on the basis of gas mass velocity. Generally, for a particular LNV, the smaller the column diameter, the larger the mass velocities will be, and the larger the pressure drop. Generally, large mass velocities are desirable because they give high mass transfer coefficients, but too large mass velocities cause flooding, which severely decreases mass transfer rates. The height of the tower is determined by mass transfer rates. Basically, the gas and liquid phases need to be in contact for a certain time for the solute to have time to diffuse from the gas phase into the liquid. This equation is called the design equation. The integral is called the number of transfer units, where y is the mole fraction of the transferable component, y minus y asterisk is the local driving force for mass transfer, and delta y is some average driving force. The number of transfer units is loosely analogous to the number of ideal trays required. Both can be thought of as measures of the difficulty of the separation. Since the NTU is dimensionless, to get units of height, the remaining factor in the design equation, defined to be the HTU, must have units of height and is called the height of one transfer unit, where KYA is the overall mass transfer coefficient times the interfacial area per unit volume of packing.